Good morning, fellow Code Simplifiers. Behzad from Code Simplifier Coding School is here with another CH tutorials for beginners. In our last video, we managed to create the order summary section and the time and the date picker. Today, we will be finishing the last section of our user interface as well as to polishing it up. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Let's check the design first to see what we need to do. In our design, we have seven buttons and a search input. We know what we need to do, so let's go and start coding. To increase our workflow, it is a great idea to define the style of the buttons first because in that case, we don't have to install each button individually. What do I mean by that? I'll show you. We need to go back to the style section and define some rules for our buttons. So scroll up and here is our style section. We want to target our buttons, then define the styles. So copy this comment from here. Below that will be buttons. Duplicate it. We defined a style to target our buttons. Then within our style, we set the width, height, and the background to the buttons to these values, 150 for the width, 50 for the height, and the light blue for our background. Now we need to run our application to verify that the style had been applied to our buttons. I ran my program, but there is a problem. We cannot see the outcome. Can you see where is the problem? The problem is we haven't defined the fourth stack panel yet because the fourth stack panel contains the buttons. That's why we don't see any buttons yet. We go back to our design to develop the fourth stack panel. We have the start and the end comment to contain our stack panel. Then we have the actual stack panel and within the stack panel we have the buttons. Now we save our work and run the program to see the outcome one more time. As you see, the button has been added to our design, but it doesn't have any value or style yet. So it's time to go back and finish the job. We start off by adding some values to the buttons, such as the name and a content. Then we will duplicate the buttons six more times. check our design to see how the outcome is look like. The buttons are here, but they don't look like our design at all. But that is not an issue. Let's go back to the design section and add some more properties to our styles. The first one is going to be margin to separate the buttons from each other. After the margin, we will have the border radius and the border brush to give a border to the button. We added our border brush, which it colors the border around the buttons. I will show you the result in a second. Then we have the border thickness, which defines what the width of that border is going to be. And then we have the corner radius, which it gives a curve to the corner of the each button. And the value for that is going to be five. And here is the result. We added the borders around each button and each button is having a five pixel radius too. There are a few more things we need to fix and that is going to be the width, height and the background color. So go back to your design. I'm going to change the width to 180. The height is going to be 45 and the background is going to be pink. And the border brush, we want to leave it for black for now. Check the design one more time. Here it is. Our buttons are having a new background color, new width and new height. As you can see, there are our buttons are too close to the top edge. And that is the next thing we need to handle too. 
but I have one more modification to our code and that is the background color of our buttons it was meant to be violet not the pink so that is a thing you need to change too so you have a similar uh, design as mine we have done with the buttons and have one more item to add then our user interface section will be finished we go back to the stack panel where we define the buttons add an input as a search item then rename the buttons according to the design Below our third button, we will have a text box. This text box is going to have an inline style because we don't want to inherit from our general style. Inline style means we define any style within the item tag. And inherit from the general style means not following the styles we define in a style section. And that will be applied to any text box. First, we need to define the name. Then we define the width and the height. Save our work and check the design to see the outcome. Everything looks like we are on the right track. In our text box, I am going to add a placeholder text. So it's going to be search, save it. Now check the design one more time to see we are set for everything else name of the buttons that is the next thing we have to do and we need to just uh, rename our buttons according to the design i renamed the buttons according to our design and the first one is going to be the reset button and following with other buttons as well so there is an important concept you need to remember and that is giving a descriptive name to your variables and your items because when in our case because when we code we need to access these items and you will see how important the naming of our items is the font size and width in the design is different to ours as you can see here and fixing that is easy. We need to add two more setters to the button install and then we will get the result we want. I added the property of the font weight and the value is going to be bold. Then I added the font size and that the value for the font size is going to be 15 pixel. Let's check what is the outcome. Three. One more thing to set, it will be the font family. So below your font size, we have the setter. The property is going to be font family. And the value for that is going to be comic sans ms. Save and check the design. And everything's pretty much similar to our design. The only thing we need to change, I believe it will be the border brush for our buttons and that is easy. You can even leave it as black as it is right now or you can change it to white from here. So to just have an identical design, I change it to white. The next step, it would be the change in the background's color. This is going to be a fairly easy step. So let's minimize our stack panels and change the backgrounds one at a time. The first stack panel was the far left stack panel and I deleted the background color of that one. Then I'm going to minimize it. Here is our second stack panel. Delete the background color, save. Then we have our third one, doesn't have any stack panel and the fourth one, which doesn't have any stack panel too. We deleted the stack panels background. Let's see what we will get up to this point. As you see, our design has a unique and one single background color. The items are too close to the edge of the, our design and we can fix that issue by adding some padding to the main stack panel. So here is our main stack panel. Below to vertical alignments, we are going to add padding to 15 pixel. Save. We added some gap from the edge and that is what we want. Next, it would be set the font colors to black, set the font family, and adjust the layers. And that would wrap up today's work. 
Here is our final design. I had to apply some changes to ensure all it comes out. Do not worry, I'll walk you through what I have done to get this result. So let's go to your design. <clears throat> we start off from the top. So in our text block style section, I changed the foreground to white. So that was the first options I've changed. Then here, the combo box, checkbox, toggle switch, and radio button. Sorry, I have to change that one to radio button to ensure all works. So I set the font family for our buttons, as well as for our combo boxes. The property margins, the margin how it works, we have four values. So the first one is going to be left. The second one is going to be top margin, right margin, and bottom margin. And you can just play around with those numbers to see how that would affect on your design. Then I did exactly the same thing for our checkboxes. So nothing very major. The toggle switch. And here is our radio button. Then in my, our uh, main stack panel, which was covering the whole uh, screen, I changed the background to gray. In our first stack panel and the top stack panel, I just gave some margin to our text so that it lays out as it is. And as you see, I use those four values. So the first one left, top, right, and the bottom margin. In our second stack panel, I haven't done much changes. I've just added this margin to the stack panel. The third one, again, I added just margin to the main stack panel. And the fourth one, which was the button, again, I added just the margin. The only thing we had to concern about was the naming of the, our items that we use in our design, because that is the most important part of the design and coding, because we want to access it, as I mentioned before, to just apply changes. So design is not a problem, it's not a major problem. That is what you have to get by end of this course. And as I mentioned, from the next video onwards, we are going to work only and solely on just coding this project. That brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry, I had to skip a few section of this video because I had to just find out what was the problem and resolve them. And I did my best to ensure everything I teach you, I will cover it in this video. If you have any question, if you got lost along the way and you're not sure about anything, you know what to do, just write your question in a comment. I do my best to respond them as quick as I can. If this video was helpful to you and you learned something new, please like the video. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please make sure you do subscribe to our channel by subscribing. You are supporting our work and you are giving us confidence to create more educational videos like what you see right now here and share with others. Thanks for your time and I will see you all next time.